you have these three, four uh, at very senior levels. You have the G20 now, which may well meet again at the summit level. You have the G8 in Italy, I think, in July, is it? And, uh, and uh, that will be, in a sense, could be a retrogressive step. The fact that everybody is now talking about G20, and actually very few people are talking about G- G8, in my view, is uh, a, a sort of a sign of the future. I think the G8 will continue, but most likely, but in some sense, as the core and the apex uh, of leadership, global leadership, I think it will recede and become more of a caucus, actually, for the G20 or whatever successor uh, summit institution we see. So my sense is that uh, that will work itself out. The main thing is not to let it interfere, again, with actually concerted action on the crisis front. Now, the uh, preparation for Copenhagen, I think, is an interesting third leg, if if you wish. And I think, again, here the key will be focus on action, focus on the commitments that will be made and on action. And I don't see there being a conflict between the fora that are preparing for this as long as, and I think there's a chance that it will be uh, happening, there comes a signal out of the G20 meeting in London that the 20 leaders actually support a strong Copenhagen uh, uh, meeting in, later this year, and that then this provides additional impetus. And then one can pick up again after the year's over in a, what let's call it, a, you know, a fourth G20 meeting the following year and push the agenda forward of whatever has been agreed in, in Copenhagen.